So, uh, so I guess, uh, hmm. yeah, maybe just say, what's your, what's your name and like talk about some of the things you've done. Sure. Uh, my name is Vitalik Buterin. I uh, write, for, write for the Bitcoin magazine. I've been doing that for two years. I've also been uh, more recently get, uh, getting into Bitcoin development. I work work with Mihai on uh, both the magazine and on this new this new project called Igora, which is sort of like a marketplace for Bitcoin, kind of kind of like eBay, but plus a whole load of social networking, plus cryptocurrencies and other cool stuff. And okay. just now working working on multi signature transactions. So. Basically, split halfway between writing and development at this point. And what what drew you into Bitcoin? Really, it was just well. I first I first saw Bitcoin at some point in March 2011. I started started writing for it pretty much immediately, but, but it took it took me a while for the for the whole thing to sort of sink in. But once it did, I think it's really the fact that it sort of Bitcoin really brings it takes. All, all of my various interests into things like uh, math, com uh, computer science, economics, just a, 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 a little politics, and it sort of br brings them all together into this, uh, into this one huge convergence. It's just, every Bitcoin is sort of, it's the Omega, it's everything at the same time. And uh, what, what areas of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency interest you the most? Hmm. Maybe prime as as coins. As far as cryptocurrencies go, I'm interested in the possibilities that some of the alternative cryptocurrencies can bring. Now, unfortunately, most of most of them aren't partic particularly uh, in novel or interesting right now. But we have things like PP coin with proof of stake, Prime coin with useful proof of work. I mean, eventually, I'll just imagine if someone comes up with a proof of work function such that every round has a 10 to the minus 20 ch chance of curing cancer. And then you build a currency off of that. I mean, bam, you basically <laughs> solved one what, uh, what of humanity's greatest medical pro problems, like with, probably within months. And what areas of Bitcoin as well? Bitcoin? Mm, interface, interfaces are probably a, an important area. Also just to, Looking, looking into some of the more the more specialized applications of of Bitcoin, like say, yeah, micro micro channels, automated payments. So if you imagine, you know, you have some 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 guy with a cell phone, and he just wants to make money passively with it, and then you want, are just walking around the city, and you want internet. Well, you turn on your app, and then you say, I want to pay 0 0.00005 BTC per megabyte per megabyte for internet. And the other guy has his app, and he says, "I want to sell internet for at least 0 0.0002 me BTC per megabyte." And you come together, and the system make it, make it, makes a tethering application automatically, and bam, you have internet, and he's gonna and he's gonna slowly get money with every megabyte that you use. I mean, there's that. Then there, then there's more sort of more traditional more traditional applications. Then there's there's really just just general adoption. Like if if we can get a, some some significant percentage percentage of internet businesses, like not all of them, I'm not necessarily too concerned about say Amazon take, taking BTC and, and immediately converting them to fiat, but more just about about getting us getting a solid community to, community together, so that you ha we have all businesses to uh, to meet pretty much everyone's needs, even even if they're not the same. You know, once we have all the, once we have all, all these different pieces, I really think Bitcoin could come could become something truly really revolutionary. Although I would say it is already. <laughs> and, and how do you and about the community? Like, what kind of community do you envision for Bitcoin? And what is what is how do you see that we would go towards that? Really, one thing I. Love. I like about not just Bitcoin, but really about the tech community in, ge in general, is just how sort of, it's just how sort of uh, laid-back, cas casual, and pragmatic the whole thing, 
the whole thing is like you don't need you don't need to fill in forms. You don't treat jobs as this sort of highly stru highly structured nine to five thing. You say yeah, you say oh here you know I have here I have my pro I have a project. Do you want to do do you want to do it for a thousand dollars? Sure. Here's seven point six nine two two one BTC and and there you go. You know it's. Uh, you speak a bit louder. Sure. Um, stupid fly. So the like really at this like I think one of like the biggest appli application of Bitcoin is sort of these people pay, people paying each other for various for various sorts of things, and it's really because I don't have a mic, it's going to come out yeah. really quiet. So you need to like really like sure. So it's this so. What I support is, is, is this this kind of eco this kind of economy where it's not really a class system. Everyone's a pretty, pretty much everyone's a pre everyone produces something. Everyone gets everyone consumes something. You know, it's, you know, it talks to the creators creators directly. You don't you don't need to sort of create all these all these huge sort of centralized services just just to be able to interact with your with a musician or buy, or buy a, some to localize some, things yeah electronic well yeah electronic just, localization exactly not 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 necessarily even even localize localized on a geographic level although i think there are lots of lots of things that could benefit from that yeah. really just decentralize you know yeah instead of you know right now we have sort of a hub and spoke model of the economy Here's a producer, employee, producer, consumer, sort of everything's organized around it. You want to see the roles get more mixed yeah. and exactly. more connect mixed. with the creators on yeah, a personal more, level. More, mi more mixed, more, more personal, just more, more resilient. Really. Yeah, and do you think uh, a lot of people, uh, when they like, look at economy, they talk about things uh, just in terms of absolute efficiency, but how do you think the resilience plays into that, and why is why is that important? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Let's say you have a you have an airplane. What's more What's more efficient? Is it more efficient to have two jet to have three jet engines, or is it more efficient to have one en jet engine and work on spending the same resources to make it four times better? Well, according to this sort of near narrow <laughs> mathematical, really unenlightened mathematical definition of of efficiency. Of like units of thrust per what uh, per gallon of, of fuel or whatever you know it seems like one jet engine is more efficient but then what happens when that jet engine malfunctions how efficient do you think it is to the pilot who's falling precipitously at 300 at 300 meters per second and and, and do, doesn't even have the cell phone reception to say good, goodbye to his family but, see that's but I think Bitcoin isn't about any, or really decentralization is not about any efficiency. It's about a more a more enlightened and holistic view of what efficiency actually is. <laughs> Very good. It's, it's not. A, it's people are people most of the most of the time when they think when they try and figure out how efficiently things work, they often measure how things work when they work. What we also need to know is how efficiently things work when they don't work. How do they, how do things fail? How do we make things fail more gracefully? Uh, would you say that that your approach of promoting decentralized alternatives uh, it only really uh, it only really like matters when there's uh, this black swan effect like this small chance of failure that's catastrophic but do you think in other other types of industries where the failure rate is not so the the when a failure happens, it's not so catastrophic that we can actually mitigate risk. That maybe it's better to centralize. Or why is why would uh, how would decentralization help in those kind of examples? Maybe it's a bit philosophical. But... Yeah. Well. Or would you say you're a decentralized I think, extremist? No. I. Th well, no. I think in, there are definitely some some uh, circumstances where central where centralization can help. I mean. In, you know, even even in the even in the Bitcoin, Bitcoin Bitcoin community with individual software projects, you know, there's one or two got one or two guys that control them. It's up to voluntary, a certain, yeah, 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 up to up to a certain level, it's a good thing. But precisely because sort of it's vol it's vol it's voluntary. So on top of the centralization of each individual project, each individual project, there's still this sort of mar this well-functioning market of, of alternatives to choose from. 
And in terms of uh, other sorts of uh, circumstances, I think even when even when centralization works, like once again, this is one area where we need to take a sort of more holistic perspective. Like when you buy some 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 product from a from a grocery store or eat in restaurants or whatever like one way of looking at the interaction is saying okay I lose money I gain a product but on the other hand like think of an independent bookstore you know the, the clerk the, the cashier there he might he might know you personally once you've bought 10 once you've bought 10 books he might be able to recommend might be able to recommend more over time he might become a he might become a friend a friend too so there's all these sort of all these sort of secondary secondary effects are just that human beings are just naturally naturally designed just socio evolutionarily designed to create which these sort of centralized economies really don't don't do a good job of maintaining it's highly artificial in a lot of ways so am I a decentralization extremist <laughs> um, well I'm not going to, I'm definitely not going to, not the sort of the sort of person who would coerce you in into abandoning centralization. That's for that's well, for sure. There's a difference between yeah. uh, rulers and leaders. Exactly. And we, leaders you... are exact. Leaders are what, are what we need are what we need more of. Really. What's the difference? Leaders leaders lead by example. Rulers lead from rule from behind. <laughs> <laughs> and the, what, what do you think about the workplace? How we've constructed our workplaces it, do you think there's ways that we can maybe increase the efficiency of, of the people or? yeah sure well first of all number one I think a lot of a lot of anti anti capitalists and really moderates in general talk about this thing called work-life balance I personally find the concept somewhat ri somewhat ridiculous because <laughs> it fundamentally implies that work is not a part of your life yeah but what really is but what is more more fun fundamental to the to the human condition than the than the capacity to produce things. I mean, we don't need work. We don't need to balance between work and life. We need to figure out ways of make of making work actually actually about living again. About more fun. <laughs> exactly, more fun, more fun. You know, as far as the work workplace goes, well, I haven't had too much too much experience in a traditional sort of workplace environment. Although I certainly have. There are. Number one, there are studies that actually suggest that once you work more than about 40 or 50 hours a week, with every additional hour, you actually get so, you get somewhat less productive, simply because you're in this sort of permanent over permanent overworked mode in which you are, in which you're actually more prone to make to making errors, to to just involuntarily taking sort of like two two second micro breaks and so forth. So really, like we don't. We really don't need these these sort of structured mon monolithic work periods. I say just like work work whenever when you're bored of working, go out, go outside for a bit, come back. And and uh, yeah, how does that play into the quality of the work? If people are yeah. you're talking about making the work more fun and the people yeah, want to work. Qualities like the quality of work definitely produce. important. Like I think when. When you enjoy doing when you enjoy doing something, when there's intrinsic motivation, like quality goes way up. Because like in more of a sort of 19th century environment where your production really really can be accurately measured by the number of screws you can turn per hour, then sure, you know, maybe certain kinds of certain kinds of uh, of coercion, certain certain kinds of of manipulation and control might be able to increase that number, but in this kind, but in the 21st century economy, you know, the kinds of work that we do is just so com so complex. You know, we're creating these software packages, we're building art, we're we're being we're being teachers. I would even even say like like cooks in a rest in a restaurant, and just pretty much every everything we do. It's just it's not that it's not the kind of work that you can measure, and really. Really, if an employee wants to screw their employer over over with bad work, they can, they can do that, and they can they can do that and and stay un, undete undetected. So, like, I, I think in an, an environment where where people actually enjoy the enjoy the work that they're doing, it's just 
the only way that we that we can even have a high level of productivity in a modern economy. And how do you think Bitcoin is going to change the workplace? Well, number one, I think uh, it's it's going to promote this sort of, this sort of idea of just work, working casually on on projects when you like when you want when you want to because like I've had to re I've had to receive page, uh, receive um, money from uh, traditional employers a couple times in my life and every time it's sort of there's always this sort of complexity of oh let's figure out the banking details could you fill in this form and so forth like really that just turns a lot of people off to, from, from starting a new relationship it's sort of it's binary you know you have to either commit or you have to or you, or you tell the guy to, the guy to go screw himself well, with Bitcoin you know no like okay here's a micro task done collect $150 then you know eventually you move on eventually move on to more to more interesting and, and hopefully long-term things so there's definitely that element and aside from that you know a whole lot more globalized like I've been Working for the working for the magazine and doing programming stuff for two years, and my employers have been in uh, the U.S., Israel, Romania, Spain. Uh, I think maybe a bit well, in in Canada too, obviously. Like the informal economy. Exactly, it's inform definitely informal to a large degree. You, once again, you see this decentralization aspect. Like really, one of the other things that I don't. Like really, the cent the other bad thing about the centralized economy is that it also really isn't good for the em the employee in a lot of ways. Like I'll just provide an example, like the U.S. healthcare system. Like number, there's obviously some people who want to improve that in the in the direction of the of the of the government controlling more of it. There's other people who want to improve it in the dire in the direction of people people paying paying for medical for medical care more directly and deregulating things but one thing everyone agree everyone agrees on is that the, this current model of uh, getting your health care from an employer from your employer it's actually like seriously screwed up because when your employer is responsible for your health insurance then if you get fired then basically you lose your health insurance at the same time and if you have a, if you get a medical condition and you get fired then not only do you lose your health insurance, but you also lose lose your your hopes in life of ever getting health insurance at those at those low rates ever ever again. So basically, in that kind of environment, like the employer has this sort of artificial amount of artificial amount of power over everyone. So whereas in this economy where everyone is sort of working on three or four different things at different things at the same time, you know, having relationships with, with customers directly, everything is sort of more, more even and diffuse. It's, yeah. You know, the, the black market or informal economy or underground yeah. economy or system D or system D, it's, it's got a lot of bad rap. Maybe you can just in a few short words describe what is actually the black market about? Yeah, well, so, you know, is it D, just you know, trucks and guns? Well, the D in, the D in system, the D in system D role, it's, it's actually stands for the French word débrouillardise, which the closest English translation I've ever seen is basically MacGyverism. <laughs> it's the sort of ability to just take, to just take the take whatever random things that life hands you, uh, work with them, and, and come up with something with something great. Creativity. So, exactly. Creati creativity, ingenuity. It's like I think like. There are the, definitely these sort of, sort of disadvantages of some black market products in that, oh, they're, they're un, unsafe or unreliable or whatever, but really that's just, that's what, like, that's what people do with the, with the limited, limited resources that you have available. But you can't, you can't coerce people into being, being able to afford these sort of, these sort of nice, uh, nice wealthy, uh, like uh, stand, standard uh, clean consumerist alternatives, like, and r really like, when when people have the oppor the opportunity, and ex and exercise the opportunity to create these to just create these sort of, these sort of products and services in informally, then it's also just once again good for resiliency. It's also good for society because people are actually interacting with each other a lot more rather than this sort of alienating environment where they're interacting with some with just with just a, a few specific companies 
I would even say like even in terms of things like uh, like drugs and guns you know in the context of drugs to be honest like this environment even here is actually in Spain has been changing my mind a little on the subject like before you know I still had I, I've always had the opinion that people have the right to to put things to put what they want into their own body their own bodies and that government shouldn't be prohibiting this stuff but I but 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 before I thought that drugs were just this sort of low class thing for stupid people whereas now you know I've, I've seen people like actually actually smoking weed and take and and pills and so forth and like these and these things like from 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 everything I'm seeing right now seem to actually improve improve people's lives to some extent so you know the more it's the market working as working as, as intended really it's just if people tool. yeah it's just a tool you know if people have people have a need then the need the need gets filled what do you what do you see that Bitcoin needs right now um, more ado more adoption is uh, definitely important like I think at this point we really should work hard on making it viable to be a hundred percent Bitcoiner like because once once you get to that like when you're at that sort of 50% or even 70% point it's sort of this wishy-washy situation where oh I can use my credit card or I can use my Bitcoin, Bitcoin. whereas if you get to the 100% mark and you say okay I'm done with my credit card I'm not even going to carry it in my wallet anymore I'm going to trash it like when people do that like that's the point where Bitcoin truly become, becomes resilient that's the point where people are like are relying really relying on it to survive and and like from there really it can only prosper so like once once it becomes viable for people to for more people to live Bitcoin only I think more, more people are gonna start drop, dropping out of the tradition traditional eco economy and going going into Bitcoin more now on the other side we also the other thing I think is that we need, really need is more com more B Bitcoin jobs you know more well, there's obviously traditional Bitcoin jobs, but as I've advocated in the past few minutes, there's also just people pay, people paying Bitcoin to just have have random things done. You know, like if you look at the Bitcoin forums, you know, like people sometimes post stuff like, "Oh, I want a logo. Let's have I'll have a contest for that," or "I want this stuff translated." You know, paying 0.2 BTC or whatever. Like that's that's the kind of just magic one one click of efficiency that Bitcoin really really enables so uh, like if we have more people like paying for paying for other people to, to do to do things for Bitcoin and also paying substantial amounts like we do want people to be able to be able to earn like some so, some decent salary work, working on Bitcoin related things alone like when that happens then that's also that that itself is going to generate the committed bitcoiners, which itself is going to result in, in services services trying to cater to them. And then you and then eventually what we're going what we're going to approach is is something closer and closer to a, to a close the loop bitcoin economy. Because right now you know if you have this economy where oh you know I like bitcoin so I'm going to buy some bitcoins from an exchange, exchange one point five percent fee. Then I'm going to use those bitcoins and immediately spend them at some at some store. Cha-ching, merchant pays another another 1.5% fee. Like, okay, 1.5% plus 1.5% equals 3%, which last which is not really much of an improvement over over credit cards. Now, of course, in many circumstances, like international international payments and and sort of person-to-person -person payments, Bitcoin is, is still as massive improvements but you know but Bitcoin's real uh, real sort of advantages of, of convenience of low fees like th that's only going to realize itself when it's just that people receive Bitcoin and people spend Bitcoin you know no conversion no exchanges involved like that's really where I think we need to go next yeah, you speak to now the developers out there and you talked about this closed loop Bitcoin economy. Yeah. What is the biggest thing that we as developers from, you know, the systems programmer to the web developer to the app programmer, everyone in the ecosystem, 
What are the different things that people can do to grow that the most right now? Well, number one, usability is important. Like I've been, I've been, like ever since I sort of became a full-time Bitcoiner about three months uh, three months ago. Like I've and I've actually used things like uh, mobile wallets at places like Borgfest and Ber and Berlin. Like you sort of become much more acutely aware of what of what people actually need. You can, like in the case of merchants, for example, they might not necessarily even even need adva advanced software. Like some of them just have a QR code printed on paper. But that's that's some that's some system DWRDs for you. <laughs> so. And, but, um, whereas on the other hand, you know, on the on the on, on the payer side, you have this situation where okay, you have a sleek Bitcoin wallet. It, it seems like it works in practice, and yet, you know, there's a bad internet, internet connection. The wallet doesn't doesn't work all that all that well anymore. Or there's or even blockchain blockchain.info that just decides decides to have one of its occasional outages mm -hmm. you might be you might be screwed so like really bitcoin developers should sort of go out into the go out into the real world more and you know just see how people how people use their software in practice and trying to and trying to develop workflows to, to optimize for their situation and also like i'd say 20% of your time optimize for those situations. 80% of your time figure out how things can fail and optimize for the failures. Optimize for even the failures that you haven't thought of yet. Like, just, like put in three put in three engines. That's what I'm doing with my multi-signature GUI, you know. A lot of my a lot of my routines have got like I've got duplicate code. You know, read from use read from SX SX history, read from blockchain.info history. Push push transactions to SX. Push transactions to blockchain.info. Do do both. If either works, then great. Like 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 figure out these sort of these sort of tricks so that your so that your software can handle everything. Like Bitcoin like Bitcoin is really this sort of ultra resilient sort of currency that can that can pretty much handle any any situation you can throw at it. Like it works in pretty much every country in the world ex except for North Korea. You can use it offline. You can use it online. You can have brain wallets. Like Really, that like that high level of versatility is sort of the the aspect of Bitcoin that we need to promote. So you know, make make your software more versatile. Make your software more more robust. You know, we're building a certain industrial strength currency. Do you have any ideas for projects that people can undertake hmm. if they're looking for something to work on? They don't have any ideas. Um, as far as what well. What do, what do Bitcoin users need? Really, just, uh, really, it amounts to various different kind, di different kind, different kinds of wallets. So, that's one area we could work on. Sort of special, like make really highly specialized wallets. Like, okay, mm -hmm. here's like a wallet for. I'm a merchant. I will, or I, I'm a restaurant owner. I want to be able to sort of click and then, and just generate receipts. Or just imagine like a restaurant just. Master public key. Yeah, master public key, or even a QR code printer. Like if you have a system that can print bills and have a QR code just on the bill, like that would immediately, like I've uh, eaten in Bitcoin restaurants and just that aspect would pretty much solve like all of the big, all of the payment deal, the whole payment delay problem in restaurants overnight. Just right. imagine like the merchant, uh, or the waiter just hands you a receipt. The receipt has a QR code on it. And then the waiter just leaves you alone, and you just pay to the QR code. Bling! And you don't even need to do anything else. Extremely, just really uh, that efficient. So aside from that, I mentioned these sort of more esoteric applications of Bitcoin. I mentioned things like payments channels. Like we can, we can do this. We can create this application where people can just pay for internet access by te by tethering through random people's cell phones and just pay by the second or by the megabyte someone yeah. needs to do this someone needs to make it uh, to 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 have to find the relationships and the and, and the marketing push to be able to, to be able to make that happen at scale you know someone someone needs Definitely. to be able to to try and inter integrate hope maybe you know hopefully integrate even a mesh net mesh networking system so that once once the density gets high enough, then all you need, to, all you need to do is just, you know, 
cell phones can just sort of pay each other. You don't really, you don't even need to connect to cell phone networks. Just have a mesh network. So, what are you currently working on? Oh, number well, as I mentioned, number one magazine. Number two, this uh, multi-signature inter interface. So tell us more about that. Sure. So multi-signature transactions. Now this is one of the other places where Bitcoin is really unique. Like theoretically, like say, if you have gold, like that gold has to be in a vault. That vault has to be controlled by somebody. Like it's physically, physically in some location. Therefore, like some, there has to be some someone who ha who has the power to, to, to take the gold out. Dollars, pretty much the same thing. You know, even if that party is the bank. With bitcoins. Like this is revolutionary. Your mon the money does not even have to be owned by any particular person. But like you can sort, you can set it up, send bitcoins to this multi-signature address, and then the money becomes simultaneously owned by a consortium, a consortium of people, or a consortium of of bitcoin address addresses and, and private keys. And this is like built into the bottom layer of the protocol, so it's not like it's not some proprietary at all. So what you can do is you can. If you imagine, you know, I want to have some some fun, right? That's that's that stores my that stores my like my, my life save my life savings, and I want that funds to be really safe, really safe against against theft, really safe against loss, really safe against me forgetting my password, and also, by the way, I live in some country in Africa, so I don't need, so I can't even trust the legal system. What do I do? You know, take my create a multi-signature address, say maybe four out of four out of seven, and then of those seven public keys, get maybe give, th give three or four of them to various different friends, none of whom know each other, and then remember, remember one in a brain wallet, keep another one with me on paper, a, a few others in treasure chests, and then, base and, then send all and then send all my money to that address. Like, how is anyone going, how am I, how is anyone going to get the money out? Well, if it's me, then I'll have to, I'll have to contact contact my friends or go in, or or retrieve retrieve all my different private keys. It'll be it'll be some effort, but I'll be able to. But how's the how's the how am I going to lose my money? Well, I really can't. Like, if I lose any one piece, there's still all the other pieces. How's anyone going to steal my money? Well, they can't because there's no way they're going to be able to even find where all these different pieces are. So you, ha so. You you get the sort of safety through resiliency, safe, safety through through redundancy mechanism, like just like just like an airplane airplane having multiple jet engines, but for but for your money. So, like your like it's your like you put your money in, and it's like it's guaranteed to be like 99.99999 percent safe against against pretty much everything. I you know betrayal, loss, theft. Society, hyperinflation, societal collapse, pretty much, pretty much everything. But that's, and like, and this is something that that people are using already. Like things like the Bitcoin funds. It's uh, these are sort of hedge funds that try and integrate Bitcoin into Wall Street. They already have this sort of two out of three multi-signature between three different jurisdictions. So no, like no single government is going is going to be even a, or no single employee is even able to. To, to, was, to, to steal those funds, and there's and there's no way they're going they're going to lose them. Like, so the problem with multi most multi sig though is that so far there haven't there hasn't been like any kind of good interface for ha for handling it. Like, sure, you know you can put in like some commands into your command line and do with with the Bitcoin Bitcoin D's JSON RPC interface. Or more recently, you know, it's gotten much more convenient with this with this SX toolkit. But like, there's there's nothing that's sort of that's even remotely convenient for the average person to use. Whereas with this interface that I'm developing, basically, okay, you know, here are your, you know, you t put in your public your public keys here, bling, creates an address. You can send to your address. Then you then if you want to spend money from your address. Create the transaction. Then there's an interface for, for you to put in for you to put in all the signatures, and it just works like magic. Like it's pretty much pretty much as easy as as I think you can make it to send to send money to get money out of a out of a multi sig address or, you, or create multi sig addresses, and you can do it. Yeah. What are your long term goals and or vision 
for with Bitcoin, with my own with my own life in general. <laughs> Bitcoin. <but laughs> Bitcoin, sure. Um, well, I I talked about the sorts of things that that I think Bitcoin needs to move needs to move forward. These sorts of. I mean, where do you see yourself? Yes. Where do I see my where I see myself working and stuff like that? Probably more writing. People seem to like my writing, so I I feel like it's my it's my job my duty as a member as a member of as of the Bitcoin community to to continue it as best as I can. There's uh, all these sorts of uh, various develop development efforts, like there's this Igora project with Mihai, then there's the multi-sig interface, and I also have have one or two things of my mind that are sort of tangentially related, but outside of Bitcoin. So I think I'm just going to continue continue working on on many things at once, continue learning, see where that and just see where it takes me. Fantastic. Yeah. Wow. Really nice.